on this episode we draw some circles. Now this is some advanced schmuck tutorial for sure. Things go wrong once again. I, I don't know what just happened. <laughs> what the heck? But luckily in the end things explode. Yeah, oh this looks sick. Hi everybody, this is Christian from LazyDiffs Academy. Welcome to episode 89 of our advanced bomb tutorial. We are going to make bombs. We actually made bombs and now it's all about animating them. Loading the cow shmup and this is what our bomb looks like. Now this is just a nice image of a dome. I'm, I'm really happy with the way this turned out. By the way, uh, while we're here, I'm second guessing a little bit one choice. You see how we have like these streaks? these curved streaks you see how there it's an uneven number so there's like a center streak and I think that it looks a little bit weird so let me change this a little bit uh, already already tweaking things already tweaking things oh my gosh here so I want to change the number of streaks to eight uh, and by the way this can be four now because it's uh, yeah no wait it's not four a 0 0.5 divided by eight what's what's that Let's keep it around for now because maybe we change the streaks. Yeah, yeah. See, this this looks a little better to me. This looks a little bit less robotic. Yeah, yeah. Good. Right. So now we have the dome, but there there's a there's a very important insight. When you're animating things, when you're creating visual stuff that is moving, um how good an individual frame looks like is far less important than how overall everything moves, right? Uh, you might be tweaking individual frames of an animation, making it all beautiful and pretty, and but then, you know, it's gonna be just over in an instant, and people won't really, you know, appreciate the beauty of it. And in fact, it's kind of bad. It's kind of bad when individual frames are looking beautiful because you will be biased towards showing them on the screen for a very long time. And that will quite often kind of destroy the animation. The animation needs to be moving forward. It shouldn't linger on individual pretty frames. Um, this is all to say that we need to animate this. This is a whole different subject, <laughs> animating things. I think we have a good foundation, but I think we need to start animating these things. There is one aspect of the animation that I want to maybe get get out no let's let's actually let's just first animate let's just first animating things there's one aspect that we cannot animate right now because of the way we draw it we need to make the drawing a little bit more complicated but we're gonna uh we're gonna deal with that in a second all right so let us go to our bomb um and let us uh let us uh, so we have the top circle we have we have uh, the entire recipe is solved that is fan freaking tastic so uh, I want to now um, set up the entire framework for how the bomb will progress. So the moment, the moment, the minute, the second I, I press bomb, I want the screen to pause and a bomb animation will play out. I want to do the hit stop bomb kind of thing because I, it kind of like also adds to this idea that the bomb is a little bit of a like way out. It kind of helps you out a little bit. It pauses everything and, and you're free to figure things out on your own. So let's do that for a second. So let's go function bomb while and function bomb end, right? So we, uh, we're we gonna use the hit stop functionality that we already had, the freeze frame functionality that we already had to, uh, to make this work. Uh, let me see how this works. So there's this freeze. There we have a. Um, okay, okay, good, good, good. Okay, so we're gonna go uh, freeze. Or wait, is it called freeze while? Call while and call back. Okay. Call while equals bomb while hole. I, I invent a whole new ways of misspelling things. There we go. Call while equals bomb while and call back bomb. It should be maybe bomb back, right? Uh, whatever. Bomb end. Okay, good. Uh, and so now, oh yeah, and then also 
freeze equals 60, whatever. Let's see how that works. So it shows up. Oh, I'm still moving. That's not good. I shouldn't be moving uh, because it should be another E. Okay, so now we pause things and now we're get, we're back, right? So this allows us to animate things now. For example, we could we could go bump rs equals zero. And then here in a, in a while, we're gonna go bump rs plus, plus equals one. And then, then, and then that's gonna be it. Let's try this. See? See? This is getting somewhere. Oh yeah, baby. By the way, the, the streaks are not perfectly centered, but maybe that's good. Yeah, so now you see the thing growing. Obviously, this looks robotic. This doesn't look great, and the bomb doesn't disappear, but it doesn't matter. I just want to see something animate. Because what I want to uh, do next is I want to... Let me show you. Let us plan out this animation. I want to have multiple phases of the animation. Phase number one... Phase number one is just going to be a growing shadow underneath, right? It's just going to be the growing shadow, right? Uh, that will just grow outward. That is going to be phase number one. And it is kind of a little bit like inspired by Akira. Akira had also kind of like at the beginning. It had a bit of a uh, dome already starting out and it was inverted and everything. But we're just gonna, not going to do inversion stuff. It's going to be a normal bomb. It's not a supernatural bomb. And it's uh, we, we start with a shadow. The reason why we start with a shadow is that here's where we might get star pickups. And I want to show the star pickups while the bomb is growing to, to indicate this is going to be our chance to show off how the bomb actually works, how the bomb changes um, uh, bullets into star pickups. The second phase of the bomb is I want a dome to descend. And this is going to be like this half finished dome, right? It's not going to be the, it's not, not and the, the dome should gradually appear on top of the shadow, which is a little bit of a weird look, right? But yeah, I want the dome to be coming down. It's suddenly appearing and coming down, right? Why do I always have to reset? What the f I love paint. This is great. <laughs> and then three, once the dome hits the, the shadow, once we have the dome fully, fully set up. So once we hit that, I want, um, and maybe, maybe we did it a little bit wrong. Maybe we did it a little bit wrong, but I want a shockwave to emanate from here, right? I want, I want a shockwave to go out. And also, I, need, I, I want to flash the screen, right? So this, this, this is to indicate like <laughs> explosion happened, right? And then immediately afterwards, uh, basically already starting with that, I want um, the dome and the shadow to collapse and on itself. So this is going to be like this four stage process. Now, when the bomb collapses on itself, that's actually already where we resume the game probably. So. Um, um, so only actually the first three phases are going to be part of our freeze frame animation and the rest is going to be just like, the you know, let the thing fade away while the, the game continues, okay? Right, so uh, we can make basically almost all of this work. We don't have the, f the shockwave thing. That's something that we need to um, maybe address. I think, I think we need to think a little bit about this. Uh, so we have the shockwave thing, but also the dome descending, this part, this part is difficult because we have to figure out how to render just like a sliver of the dome. So that's something that I am, I'm a little bit worried about. Let me show you what that should entail. So looking from the side, looking from the side, our dome right now looks something like this. That's, that's the impression that we want to create, right? Ugh, whatever. So this is what we're looking at right now. But what I want to now do is I want to create like a partial dome, right? I, I want to do slice this dome and only render this part, right? And I want to be able to move this, the line at which we're slicing the up and down. I want to gradually make the dome descent. Start at the little circle and, and expand until it actually turns into the, the dome. 
and yeah, that's that's a little bit tricky. That's a little bit tricky. That's that's something that that maybe like that's one of those math the math puzzles on TikTok. You know, we'll figure out the area of the circle. Uh, because what we're having right now is we're having something like this. Wait, and let me let me draw it the way we actually draw. It. So we need to first of all, there is like a implied, but we're not actually drawing it, and we have to figure out where that is. There is a like a zenith, so to speak. There is a there is the top of the dome <laughs> from the top of my dome, and there is the middle of the dome on the ground. Right, that's going to be just the center of the of the oval. That's not difficult to figure out. And now that's going to be kind of like the this is going to be the the pillar of the dome so to speak the central pillar if you this was a constructed like a tent this would be central the central pillar right and so what we need to now do if you think about it we need to start drawing a little oval here right that's how how this starts out and this oval then moves down a little bit and gets bigger just like an oval that just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Something like this. And then there is at some point a transition. There is at some point a transition or maybe where, or maybe maybe it's kind of like something like this, where we start drawing, uh, in addition, the half circle, right? But that transition is actually, for our perspective, very late. So it's just like a little oval that travels along this path down to the bottom and then becomes this, this central oval. So first of all, we need to figure out where this point is. We need to figure out, we need to draw an oval that travels down this path. <laughs> and that's, that's it for now. And then we're gonna figure out the rest, okay? Oh, and also I want to clarify those streaks on the sides that we have here. Uh, we're not gonna just, we're just not gonna deal with them. I'm just not gonna deal with them. They should maybe show up in the first place when the dome hasn't touched the ground. All right, so I want to start this journey. <laughs> It's going to be quite a journey. I want to start this journey with, for, 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 for starters, let's set our radiuses at, at just a normal radius, right? Just, I just want to show the bound for that. That's good. Now I want to introduce a new um, variable that's going to be called dome, or let's call it bump, so it's clear what, what kind of dome this is. Bump, bump, DME. And then here in the while, we're just going to go uh, plus equal plus equals one right uh, no not one zero one this is going to be kind of like a percentage number that tells us you know how far along this animation we're 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 along right and then uh, we're gonna go f uh, freeze forever but if bomb dme if that's greater than z uh, than one then and bomb dme equals one and then freeze equals zero. Basically what we're doing is we're increasing bomb by 0 0.01 until it reaches one, uh, bomb dome uh, 0 0.01 until it reaches one. And then once it reaches one, we stop the freezing. Uh, <coughs> plus equal. <coughs> That's it. it. It happened. Okay, now of course the bomb dome doesn't do anything, so I want to now also do something here. Bomb dome, right? So it, it, this is only something that we're gonna do here. Okay, so what I want to maybe add, add first is figure out where the position, where the center of our our little of our little new uh, ellipse should be. That, that that center along the center pillar, like the position of the oval that we are about to draw at on the center pillar, right? Let's figure this out. So what is the height of the central pillar? Well, the height of the central pillar, I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna write it like this. The height of that central pillar, that is gonna be bump uh, radius dome multiplied by um, pers, right? It's just the radius multiplied with a perspective. Uh, basically the same thing we have here. By the way, why is it radius? It shouldn't be RD, it should be RD. Because that's a dome. Um, right, so that's gonna be the height, right? So the bomb DME, we kind of made it a little bit backwards, but the bomb DME, when it's zero, then uh, the, the actual position that we're looking for, it should be actually at that, that value, and it should travel towards zero. So it's kind of like the, the opposite of what we're doing here. So let's implement this like this. So we're gonna go something like local 
dome H, so that's the height of the dome, so to speak. Uh, and then we're gonna add, be like one minus dome bump dome multiplied with this stuff, right? So that's gonna be the position of our little dot. And what I want to just do now is actually just draw that little dot, that little dot. Um, PSPR, bomb X, bump Y minus uh, dom H. Eight, and let's, let's see how that looks. Uh, not PSPR, what I'm, what I'm saying, PSET. It worked! You see the little dot traveling from the from the top, from the top of my dome. Is it starting too too high? No, I don't think so. Let, let's see if it starts too high. Yeah, this looks as if this was the top of the dome. Yeah, it's, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's good enough. Okay, so we figured out the traveling along the center pillar. Now what we need to find out is what the radius of our oval is. And it, we're just going to use a sine function because it's it's the the radius of that of that dome is actually follows a sine curve. Now this is some advanced schmap tutorial for sure. So if this is this is our dome, right? And this is our central pillar, right? So at we are basically just drawing these lines, right? We're just drawing these lines. And what 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 do you think it is? This is this is just a trigonomic trigonomic function, sine and cosine, depending on how you think about it. This segment is the one that we're interested in. Why is it rounded? Okay. This segment is the one that we're interested in. So it's just like we're just covering a fourth of the circle, right? So dome sin. I'm just gonna call it dome sin because I think it's very funny. It's gonna be sine dome. Bomb dome, bomb BME divided by four. That's all there is. There is not much to it. Uh, and then I'm gonna do an oval here to test it out. So let me do, what did I do? Okay, so here I'm gonna draw the oval starting at, uh, at this position. This is gonna be center of the oval. And I'm gonna be do everything the same Except I multiply by dome sin. Everything gets multiplied by dome sin. And then it's not going to be overfill, it's just going to be normal oval, and I'm going to draw it in red. Right, I'm drawing it before drawing everything else, so I'm going to draw it now after everything else. See? It looks totally good! It totally looks as as the th animation that we're looking for, right? And you can see that at the beginning, it, only at this point we, do we need to actually add, only at this point the limb of the dome starts to be big enough that we need to actually start to draw the, um, the, the semicircle. So actually I want to be like debug. Two equals bomb DME like this and I want this to go slower let's see so 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.3 4 5 6 7 8 8 0 0.8 is where we need to start to draw the semicircle as well so we can actually get this one out already and we're gonna replace I know this is a little bit scary. I'm gonna keep this around as a debug. Uh, but we're gonna replace the old oval with this new oval. This is gonna be just our new oval now. This is the base oval that we draw. Um, zero oval fill. Because it's just the same job, right? And then here is where we're drawing the streaks and the, the semicircle. Uh, and I want to trigger this only if um, bomb DME is greater than 0 
Only then are we going to draw this rest here. Now there's a bit of a problem. You see how the streaks, you see how the streaks are coming a little bit too early. So the streaks uh, we need to trigger when they actually come in, when we actually don't bump down, it's actually equals zero, equals one. Now this is a bit of a sudden thing, but it's gonna be masked by a flash, so I don't mind that too much. For now, I, I have this dome effect that I was looking for, and that is exactly what I need. This could be enhanced if there was maybe like a secondary shadow, but uh, whatever. All right, so let me remove this debug. I wonder why is, it, why is it flashing? That makes no sense. That shouldn't be white. Why is it white? Ah, see, we have, we have this. All right, so what I want to maybe do is I want to have a specific variable to flash the ship. So flash ship equals true uh, when we die. And then at the beginning of the game, we reset this. And then die two is callback. That's where we, we return. So if the lives are zero, then obviously we, we're, do we're done though. Actually, let's just reset it. False. And then that's gonna be it. So now, when it's still happening. Oh yeah, because I'm not doing it. Uh, I'm not checking it. So if, instead of checking for freeze, we're gonna check a flash ship. So now the explosion happens and our ship doesn't necessarily fresh. But if I get hit, it's good. Well, actually, It, it, it doesn't flash, it should flash longer. Oh no, it's good. Now it is time to go through the different phases of the bomb. So as we said, there were multiple phases. Uh, there is one phase is, I'm gonna write them all down. Phase one, or pH, let's, let's call it one. Grow shadow, then dome descent, flash shockwave. Shrink. Shrinky. <laughs> okay. Um, let me let me have a variable that controls the different phases. So we so we have a little state machine happening, so so we know what we're currently doing. So we're gonna call this bomb bomb phase and we're gonna set it to one. We are now at bomb phase one. And we're gonna go if bomb phase equals one then and then else if bomb face equals two then and then else if bump face equals three and then afterwards else not we're not we're gonna figure out what happens else okay so I want to start with with the bomb RS and the, and the radius of the shadow, I want to start at zero and I want to add something to the shadow. Now, if we do that, if we just add something to the shadow, that, will, that won't look fun, that won't look nice because as we already saw that, that looks like a robotic animation. So what I actually want to do here is I want to have a bit of an ease happening. There's two major choices that we, I mean, there's lots of different animation curves that we do, but like the very basic ones is an ease in and ease out. Ease in, I think means, I always get them confused. Ease in means that it's, we're easing into the value that, that we are, um, that we are, um, that we're looking for. So we're moving uh, fast at the beginning and then slowing down at the end. I think that's kind of really nice for a bomb. I think that's, that's, that's a good choice. And also it's easier to program. So it's gonna be here. Um, we're gonna go bump RS plus equal, then um, a target size. We just set it to 32 for now. That, that'll work kind of nicely. Let's set it to 40 so we have a little bit bigger bump. Minus uh, bump RS. And then div divide by some number, for example, two. And then we're gonna bump RD. We're gonna, and we're gonna set to bump RS. Both should grow at the same time. Now also something I want to maybe add here, so, so we have a bit of a sense of timing. I'm gonna go call bump t. I know we're adding a lot of variables here, but I think 
It's a cool idea. So we just count the number of frames um, we're already at. Um, we could use the freeze variable because that does this basically the same thing. Um, I think bomb t, uh, I, the, the thing with the freeze variable is like right now we, we set it to some crazy value and it's ticking down and we change the value that changes the timing. You know, it's, I, I, I just want to have a dedicated variable for that. Sue me. Maybe later on we can remove it. Maybe later on when we settled for a freeze value, we can maybe because the freeze value we're not actually driving uh, the freeze frame thing with the uh, with any number of frames right now. We're driving it through the different mechanics that are happening here. Maybe we're gonna see. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna see like if bump t is greater than I don't know a second, then and then we're gonna set to bump phase two, right? That was basically the idea. That that's that's how we would go across an embankment phase two. We do something different. Let's see if this works. Why did that happen? Oh yeah, <laughs> because right. Uh, we basically have to also set the bomb dome to zero. We already did that. that that's perfect. So let's let's just do that immediately, like this. Okay, that was way too fast, but <laughs> it works, right? So we have like the ease in happening and then the slowly the dome descends. A little bit too slow the dome descent and the ease in is a little bit too fast. Uh, let's try a different value. I think 10 was something that worked well in my experiments. So see now we have a little bit of a nice transition. And I want to maybe start the dome descending while the, uh, the ease in is still happening, right? Uh, I figured out a good timing for this would be 20. But now I don't like how the uh, growing of the bomb, how, how that doesn't, how that gets interrupted by the dome descending. So I want to have maybe, maybe a little bit of overlap. So I want to be doing this animation of the bomb, uh, of the size of the bomb. I want to be happening as the dome is, uh, is descending. See now, now it doesn't look as if the dome descending interrupts anything because you still, still see some movement from the bomb as a dome uh, descends. With a dome descending, is uh, the thing is I want the bone the, the bone to be descending. I want there to, because right now it looks, it, it still, it looks a little bit robotic. The dome just like burp. And we can make it faster. But it still looks like just a little bit like there's no force behind it. So I want there to be an acceleration. I wanted, uh, there's already like a visual acceleration because we're following a sine curve, but still I want the dome to be appearing, moving to moving slow at the beginning and then going faster the, the closer it gets to the surface. So it like hits the surface with a with acceleration, with, a, with, a, with some force. And for that, I have to, <laughs> I, regret, I regret to inform you, there's another variable that play. Uh, we, let's call it bomb SPD. I'm gonna set it to zero. So we're gonna add bomb SPD to bomb dome and S bomb SPD uh, is also gonna get increased a little bit. 0 0.02 is something that worked well. Oh, wow. So this is very sudden. This is a very sudden thing, but maybe that's good. I, I, again, I did some experiments figuring out what a good speed is. Maybe, maybe like this, maybe, maybe you have to go back to a slightly different setup. Again, your your instinct, especially when something is pretty, is to make it last longer. And I think that's a bad instinct to follow. Like, oh, that's such a nice animation, right? But the, the animation actually doesn't hold up that well. If you look at it, it's it doesn't have that much force, right? So 0 0.02 is the one that I had. And it's very sudden, but I think it's fine because afterwards we're gonna have to do a flash. Right, so if we're reaching, if we go over one, then we set it to one. Then I want the bump phase to be set to three. And I want to flash the screen. So fade perk equals one. That's great. See, already it's coming together. Boom. I want to remove this debug because I don't think we need that anymore. Wait, did we remove the debug? What is the little pixel that we have there? It's like a little pixel. You, you see the pixel? There, there's like a little pixel on... on the... I, am I taking crazy pills? All right, I don't know where that pixel comes from, but we have to move on with our lives. Um, okay, so afterwards, what we want to do is we want to everything to start shrinking again, right? 
So we're going to just re um, uh, repurpose this bump speed that we have right now. We're going to repurpose it to do something different. Now it's going to make the entire dome collapse on itself, right? So what we want to do is like, hmm, I think I, we made some mistake. We, I think we actually don't want the dome and the shadow to have a different... Oh, actually the shadow one might be referring to something else, but we're going to deal with that in a second. So first of all, I want to have bump uh, DME minus equal so I want it to shrink now right I want to um, bump speed to be shrinking the bump dome but I also want to reset the bump speed to something small like minus 0 0.2 or something right and then I want bump speed to be minus equal to be just increasing right like or decreasing because we're subtracting wait wait we're hmm. okay like this you know what, let's just see what that looks like. <laughs> okay, not dome, but well, it was funny. Um, bump uh, radius dome is what we want to do. So now you see this collapsing on itself, right? And we also want to go maybe bump radius shadow equals bump radius dome. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this looks sick. But of course, we want now this to be accelerating. Um, some so bump SPD equals bump SPD plus zero point one or something like this. And then if bump RD. If um, if that's smaller equals zero, then um, in this case we just end this. So, so we're gonna go freeze equals zero. This is we're gonna end it later on, uh, earlier later on. But but first I want to just get out of this, and then bump end we reset everything. So bump R D equals zero and bump. Rs is also zero, so we're not drawing them anymore. Or actually, wasn't it minus one? Oh, yeah, it's zero. Okay, good. Okay. That's our explosion there, right there. Okay, so I'm flashing it a little bit too harsh, I think. We need to flash it a little bit uh, softer. Yeah, fade back here. So let's go at 0 0.5. So it's a little bit of a softer explosion. Oh, yeah, that's, that looks a lot more doable. It's not as extreme. But you can already tell that I want to maybe have control sooner, right? I, I want to be already flying when the bomb is collapsing. And of course, the problem that we have right now is, is the bomb's not exploding where, where my ship is. And... And all sorts of other things. So let me fix those little details now. So first of all, a PSPRX. Or, or is it PSPR or... or let's, 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 let's just try PSPRX. Let's, let's see how that works. All right, so now the bomb is starting where the ship is. That's good. And I actually maybe do want to flash ship here, after all. And I want to turn it off when we do here. Let's see how that works. Yes. Yeah, um, because that way it seems like the dome is encompassing us, and I think that's cool. I'm not sure where that, <laughs> where that single pixel is coming from. I'm so stumped by this pixel. Let me let me figure out the pixel. Maybe it has to do with a bomb shadow. What if we don't draw the shadow? Do will this pixel still be there? It's still there. You pixel. What if we don't draw the dome? Ah, it's part of the dome. Oh, because we're always drawing the dome. That's right. So it draws a dome at a radius of of zero, right? So let's say something like, so actually this is only if, if this and bomb dome is greater than zero. Yeah, like this. Yes. I, I don't know what just happened. <laughs> what the heck? What was that? <laughs> okay, obviously we have no sound effects and everything that, that will also add to, to the... And of course we want this dome to be, uh, to be changing Oh, 
interesting. And I was blinking and it was still blinking while I was... I might need to fix this. Yes. Perfect. All right, there's one last change that I want to do, and that is has to do with the fact what the bump shadow means, because it's kind of means a little bit something else than than because right now the dome and the shadow underneath are actually always the same size, but what I want to do is show a bit of a shock wave emanating from the from the bump when it explodes, and um, so what I want to maybe do is I want to make, make the bump RS, I want to, that to refer to the outline, right? To this part here, there is like an outline to the shadow, right? I want that to refer to the outline, and then the other one will be controlled by a bump dome, right? So, so something like this. So, uh, no, not bump dome, uh, bump RD, right? So the fill will, is going to be controlled by bump RD and the rest is going to be con controlled by bump RS. Um, I'm going to see bump RS where it that, uh, gets used in this thing that we can already remove. This, 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 good. Yeah, okay, so, so now it's just the outline that is being controlled by bump RS. Uh, we still um, initiate them both together and we actually bomb, animate bomb RS, but that's fine. Uh, but here, where when the things collide, I want the bomb RD radius dome. Uh, radius dome I want to animate in this direction, but R RS I want to animate in a different direction. Uh, we can maybe just like go plus. And we're going to see how that looks. See, I like how there's like this, what, what happens? Sometimes it just doesn't redraw. Such a weird bug. You see? There is the, this, this, this uh, shadow, this, this, this shack wave emanating. I love that, but I think it's a little bit too slow. Uh, what if we just multiply it by 10? Yeah. Yeah, that's fantastic. Maybe 10 is too much. Let's see how, let's try experiment different values. I think this is a little bit too slow. Eight. Yeah, it's better. It's nothing big, just a little, you know, a little bit of a... visual flourish. Oh, mm. we don't want that to happen. I think the problem is that we got killed while, I'm not sure what happened there. Uh, but yeah, at the, at the end, but at the end we were resetting stuff. That is what I am a little bit confused about. All right, not sure what exactly happens here, but let's do a to-do list for next time because I think this bomb stuff is broadly speaking working. There is just a couple of things that we need to make to make it actually interact with stuff, make it actually hurt enemies, you know, that kind of stuff. So so let's do a to-do list of, of things that we want to fix. First of all, there's this weird lingering shadow issue. What, what was that about? I don't know. Mm, bug, let's call it bug, so it's very clear. Uh, we need to track this down. Uh, I want to maybe exit bomb earlier. I want to maybe have control over the ship as the bomb is already fading out, right? So in phase number three, yeah, in this phase, in phase number three, I want to maybe already relinquish control to the player and, and let the bomb fade out while the, the game gameplay is continuing. Uh, bomb hurting enemies is something that we really need and then bomb um, converting shots is something also that we need and obviously on the top of the screen uh, sound effects obviously something that we absolutely need to add this bomb is not as effective when it when there is no sound happening
All right, so let us wrap up this episode. We have a good list for next time, for things to do next time. For now, I want to say the things I say. As always at the end of each episode, thank you so much for your support. Thank you so much for supporting me on coffee.com or for making this project possible. And today I want to read a bit of a critical comment. Uh, this is from Old Man J on episode three of the basic tutorial. These are great videos. I'm learning from, uh, I'm learning a lot from them, but perhaps in the future you could jabber a bit less. I'm sure a lot of people here will disagree, but I seriously feel like this could, this video could been at least 10 to 15 minutes shorter uh, had you just gotten straight to the point. I understand the importance of keeping it simple for complete beginners, but I still feel like you gotta speed it up a little. I want to watch this video at 1.5 speed to kind of get through all the fluff. Yeah, that's a uh, common sentiment that I, I listen to a lot of videos, I, I hear you. This issue has a little bit with the fact of how I record the videos. I don't do scripted videos. The way to make those videos faster is to script them out. But that goes a little bit against the philosophy of how I do things on this show. I want to show you me developing the game and that requires me to sometimes just be a little bit inefficient with the way I use my time. That is generally how you develop games. I do add editing run on those episodes. I make sure to cut out you know any any dead air and stuff like that i do try to condense them as good as possible but there is just so much you can do when you record everything live and there's like multiple reasons why i don't want to do scripted stuff first of all it's just a lot more work to do scripted stuff you have to script it out in advance and everything but also i think um, you end up with a kind of like a synthetic uh, result. You end up with not any genuine depiction of somebody developing something, but instead it's just like this, you know, pre-prepared thing where nothing goes wrong and everything goes perfectly well and you need just gloss all over the details that are actually kind of difficult to figure out when you do it on your own. So the service that I'm doing here, that's something I dedicated myself to, is to showing like this more natural kind of tutorials and that's just like the nature of the thing. I will look for ways to make those videos go a little bit more smoother the future uh, something I'm thinking about making about this video um, series is making like a condensed version that's something that people asked about like a scripted summary of how I went about making this, this game that's something I might do in the future however if you want to watch this at 1.5 speed that's fine to me I think that's a very valid approach to digesting the videos anyway that is it for today um, next time we're gonna wrap up the bombs clear up all the loose ends make them interact with the enemies and so forth see you next time around guys bye bye